Can you stop listening to it? Can you? Like this is this summertime. You know goddamn well black barbecues, you know, step in the name of love and goddamn happy people. It's a must to be played. And do you play that shit still? They're like, you still listen to Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson ain't go to jail. But Bill Cosby went to jail. I still watch Cosby Show. I don't know, man. This shit got me confused. Yo, what up, y'all? It's the Ronnie Ray Show. Once again, we're back with the segments, man. We got the segments. We got off my chest. We got Remember the Classics. We got Random Lists. <laughs> we got, also got a new segment we call uh, Worst Day at Work. And the shout-out, as always, got the shout-out portion of the show. So, let's get it started right now. Segment one. Let's go. All right, man. This is off my chest, man. Happened about a week or so ago, and I'm like, ah, I gotta talk about it, man. Gotta talk about it, man, because this guy is from Chicago, and I'm like, damn it! They trapped him in a jail cell instead of the clock. God damn it, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Robin Sylvester Kelly. R. Kelly, as you know. R. Kelly got a 30 piece. He got a 30 goddamn piece, and it wasn't even in Chicago, it was in another damn state. I'm like, yo, you are spreading this shit across the United States. He got some more pieces coming, too. It's fucked up. He got more pieces coming. Because he got Minnesota, and he got to come home to Illinois. God damn it, Illinois. I say Illinois. I hear people say Illinois. No. Illinois. I'm from here. I'm here now. It's nice and violent out here where I live. And the whole time, the whole time, I knew. I like, he's not out. I never said he was guilty. I never said he did it. I never said he did it. But I'm looking at him. I'm looking at the documentary, and I'm like, oh, man. I'm going to have to say it out loud. And then I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to, I, 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 you know, you know when you know better, like, I, I know it, but I'm not going to say it. You know, it kind of like when O.J. Um, went to jail, I mean, um, Nicole Brown, whatever name. When she died and O.J.'s wife died, you're like, ah, ah, ah woo, I don't want to say it, boy. But, man, I'm going to tell you this. When I saw that documentary, I almost said it out loud. I'm like, you know what, man, all this stuff was against him. What is, why am I holding back? Why am I holding back my honesty with this guy? Then I started thinking, like, I met this dude before, and he was an asshole. Like, okay, well, fuck him. He's guilty. No, I still, I still hard for me to say it, but I met him. He was a jerk, and I ain't going to bullshit you, man. I'm not saying because he's down. I'm just telling y'all the story. I met this guy, and I'm like, damn, man, he a little fucked up with that shit, with his fans. You got to treat people right, Rob, man. This is his pride karma. I don't know, brother. I don't know, man. I met him in the Evergreen Plaza back in 1993. Two little kids asked for an autograph. He was there with bodyguards. It was 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Like, what nobody really in the store? Me and the homie trying to buy a tape, and this lady and her two kids. And the mom asked her to go over there and talk to him. He pushed the kid away. The kid had to be three, five to six years old. I'm like, God damn, Rob, you could have you signed the thing for the kid. It wasn't a lot of people there, man. And then the last time, it was probably a few years about, about when I first moved back to Chicago about like seven years ago. I met Harold. They walking out. Him and his crew walking out. And I saw that he signed the apron for the dude at the Herald. And he's like, man, I'm like, oh, Robert Kelly, Robert, 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 Robert R. Kelly, that was him out there? Like, yeah, that was him, man. Fuck that motherfucker. I'm like, what the fuck you mean? He done came in twice, man. He done got like a hundred something dollars, two hundred something dollars worth of food, and ain't pay for shit. I was like, damn, he ain't even pay you? Still didn't want to say he was guilty, though. And I had to think back. I'm like, shit, man. Damn, yo. Come on, R. Kelly, man. But the question is this. The question is this. I was doing a show couple weeks ago, and um, I was going into a Bill Cosby bit, and the lady was like, he ain't do it, he ain't do it, and I'm like, damn, she's like, just like R. Kelly, he ain't do it, I'm like, oh, shit, what the fuck, like, you still listen to R. Kelly? Just, just like R. Kelly, you gonna stop listening to his music? Hell no. No, 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 no. If it comes on while I'm doing something, I'll let it play. <laughs> but I'm not going, hey, well, R. Kelly, shit, I need to <laughs> I hear Gotham City for the ghetto remixing this bitch. No, I don't, no, I don't do that. Can you stop listening to it? Can you? Like, this is, this summertime. You know goddamn well, black barbecues, you know, step in the name of love and goddamn happy people. It's a must to be played. And do you play that shit still? He in jail now. It's been, they, they done said it. He done went in. They're like, you still listen to Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson ain't go to jail. I don't think Michael Jackson did it anyway. Even if I hated Michael Jackson, I don't think he did it. But Bill Cosby went to jail. I still watch Cosby Show. I don't know, man. This shit got me confused. I'm just saying, hey, R. Kelly, you got fucked 30 piece. And more pieces are coming because it's not looking good for you, bro. I'm sorry, man. You from the shot, you from the shot, man. You from the shot. Do I cut that shit off? With? Mm. Happy people is the joint. But then you don't listen to R. Kelly. You got to stop listening to the shit he wrote. 
You guys, you can't listen to B2K no more. Ain't no way. You can't listen to that shit. That's, that's him. You can't listen to fucking uh, Maxwell. He wrote songs for him. You are not alone, Michael J. He wrote Celine Dion. You got Jack. Man, come on, man. R. Kelly all over the fucking place. But that ain't him singing. I'm just his word. Dude, same shit. This shit might be confusing to people. What the fuck you talking about? You gonna go in the circles, Ryan Ray? I just don't know. I'm telling you this shit now. I don't know how to feel about this shit. When he came out with public announcement, that was my heyday of um, hitting vagina. So it's like, shit, that was the background music of my life. Can't take that back. Can't not remember smashing chicks. <laughs> I can't not remember doing all that shit. That that's the music back there. So shit, man. Fuck you, R. Kelly, man. Fuck you, man. Too talented to be fucking up. You fucked up, man. Now you got a 30 piece in New York. And more pieces are coming. Fuck it. Next segment. All right, here we go. Remember the classics. Let's go with this one. One of my favorite sitcoms of all time. I'm going back to, night, to January 14, 1972. That's right. I'm talking about Sanford and Son. Sanford and Son. Dun, 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 dun. Made by Quincy Jones, the great Quincy Jones made that song. You know, you know I listened to his uh, his essential list, and that song came on. Like, all right, I thought the song was like 30 seconds, like on the TV. No, that's like, yeah, a whole clap and like remix shit. You need somebody to rap to that motherfucker. That shit sound tight. It was a remake from a show called Steptone and Son in England, and they're like, yo, this dude make it Americanized, put them in watch, and make Red Fox the dad, and make Demont Wilson the son. The show is just hilarious. I think it was the first sitcom by a black per with a black lead, other than like Amos and Andy, and you had um, Julia with my um, with the late great um, Diane Carroll. Salute the Red Fox. The Red Fox is the party anim the party album dude with with the dirty mouth. That's why the X is on the at the end. You know what I'm saying? So Red Fox, I'm like, oh, you put him on TV, so you gotta be careful, dude. He killed it, man. Him. He had a bunch of characters on there I love. You had Rollo, you had Grady, you had Bubba, you had Leroy and Skillet, you had the cops, you had uh, Woodrow, um, and you had Aunt Esther, man. Aunt Esther and Fred used to go at it. I'm like, straight up and down, Martin took that dynamic between, uh, <laughs> between him and Pam and just snagged it for Red Fox and put it in his show, which was a great thing to steal. No, no knock on Martin, man. Best thing about the show to me, Red Fox got the shine, like I said. Red Fox was in his 50s when he got this show, man. So it was like, yo, opportunity is always time when you're great. Your time will come. Favorite episodes? Oh, man, so many. It's so many, man. <laughs> so many. Uh, the Legal Eagle episode, uh, the one with the dude in the bathtub, uh, Lamont Goes Karate, uh, <laughs> Big Money Grip, uh, Lena Horn episode. It's so many, dude. All the ones that Paul Mooney wrote because you knew at one point the word nigga was going to be said. <laughs> Every, and they don't bleep it out on TV. They play that shit. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> Overall, man, a very, very funny show, man. I don't think it gets his props. DeMont Wilson, I think, is the only cast member that's still alive, man. Rest in peace to everybody that was on the show, man. And thank you guys for giving us the laughter, man. Sanford and Son, bro. Legendary show. That, that, that. Okay, y'all, here we go. Random list. Random list this week. Since I'm a comedian, I'm going the best def, def, the best def Jam performances I've ever seen on TV. Number 11. Number 11 on this list. Y'all probably know this dude. I think this dude probably out there grinding or whatever. But I'm going to tell you this about this guy. He has a joke that me and my cousin constantly say and laugh the same way. I don't, I've never met this guy. I lived in L.A. for 13 years. I never met this dude. This guy's name is Andre Covington. Andre Covington, <laughs> he got a joke, or he said, he got to raise our, our youth right, man. They got to teach them, man, because you got to talk to them and let them know what's going on. I asked one young dude, I'm like, yo, he said, how do you feel about apartheid? He's like, apartheid? Man, I love apartheid. I was in apartheid last night. Like, come on, man. That joke right there? Ugh, and y'all probably watch it. What, what is the part time? <laughs> number 10, J. Anthony Brown. J. Anthony Brown is number 10, because J. Anthony Brown, I remember watching J. Anthony Brown did the, what, old man, how old man greet each other. Like, watch out there now. That shit, kill him. Kill him. It got him a ca whole career from that. Dude was grinding for years. He had the one shot on TV. He did that. He, he's been paid ever since. Tom joined the show, Steve Harvey show, 
This dude's all over the damn place after that shit. Number nine, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Tony Woods. I'm gonna go Tony Woods. Tony Woods, he got props from Chappelle. Chappelle, like, he took everything from his cat. Dude, crazy smooth, man. Super funny, man. Great storyteller. He got the one with the cat scratching him in the ass. I'm like, dude, that shit is just fucking funny. Him beating up the dude with the little arm or getting beat up by a dude with a little arm on the train. That was it for me. Number eight, I'm going with Cedric the Entertainer. He put the cap on and said, this is, it could be your old lunch lady. And thing. Ain't no more green beans. Just mad potato and corn. Dude, that's classic. Number seven, y'all be like, who is this guy? Number seven, I'm going Reggie McFadden. Reggie McFadden, number seven, man. He came on, I laughed at every bit this dude did. I thought he was going to be one of the biggest comedians in the world. He talked about being in the projects. He talked about roaches, thinking like they ninjas and chilling and shit, and people getting beat up in the projects, girls getting beat up, <laughs> people having sex without condoms. He, he put all that in like eight minutes. I don't know how long he did. It seemed like he was up there longer than everybody, though, but dude... Killed it. I have no idea what Richard McFadden is. Dude, you funny. Wherever you are, you see this dude, that shit still makes me laugh to this day, man. Number six. Number six, I'm going, I'm going Bill Bellamy. I'm going Jersey. I'm going Bill Bellamy on this. He was on there twice. I think he's one of the first, on one of the first episodes. And he did, honey, guess what? What, babe? We're fucking, we're fucking pregnant. Fucking ain't some shit like that. Shit was hilarious. Then he came back with the booty call. Killed it. They got songs about it, and he should be in the dictionary under booty call. That was his shit. Like, it would maybe have been said everywhere, but right there on HBO that day, Bill Bellamy became a star. He's on MTV jams, he had TV shows, he got movies. Dude still works. Look young than the motherfucker. Still looks the goddamn same, which is crazy. Number five, I'm going Eddie Griffin. Eddie Griffin, number five. He did um, a Rodney King joke. Uh, <laughs> people doing cocaine down there, and he did Michael Jackson at the end. When he did Michael Jackson, he did the, he started dancing. The audience erupted, and that's pretty much what I was watching, how the audience erupt after they did their thing, man. And, like, yeah, he had Aaron Hall, like, doing like this. I'm like, yo, this dude, kill it. Still works. Still coming. I remember he came, did the show I was on, and took up the stage for two hours. But, hey, that's Eddie Griffin. Number four, I'm going shot town on this one. I'm going shot town on number four. I'm going Adele Givens. Adele Givens was killing it during the set. But the funniest thing she said, which is probably one of the greatest ad libs I ever heard in my life, it was just in the pocket. She was ready for it. <laughs> Dude said something about blowjob. Give him a blowjob. She said, My big ass lift your little old dick. It like be giving a well a tic tac. Motherfucker, that place went crazy. They went crazy for that. She, was, she can work for the rest of her life after that shit. It's been 30 years. She can work for the rest of her life from that bit alone. That was an ad lib, man. Number three, come on, man. You got, you know what number three is, man. God damn it. When I saw him, I was like, all right, man, I got to do this shit. Number three is Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker, man, his whole energy is just different, man. Like I ain't seen nobody to this day like this guy. And when I saw him on that, I was like, damn, who the fuck is this guy? You know what I'm saying? Like, who the fuck is this guy? He was 20. Killer. Michael Jackson as a pimp? Him having sex in his mama's house? Come on, man. Then he had the, he came back again. He was even funnier. He even went back three times. This dude was fucking dope. Fucking, fucking hilarious, man. Number two, I'm going with the host. The host. You got to go with the host. Ain't, ain't no... I wish Martin was like, look, tonight my night. If he was like, tonight my night, I'm going to rip it. Because wasn't nobody as hot as Martin Lawrence at this time. This dude was king around that time. This is before Martin show came on. This dude was fucking hilarious. He was hosting the show. He wasn't even doing a lot of his jokes most of the time. That was some of the best shit I ever seen in my life. And if you watch my stuff, I tell y'all, I watched a clip of him hosting the show before I, ever, before I host the show. I have to watch a clip of him on that show hosting. So, because it, it inspires me, man. This dude was at the top of his game. But we didn't get enough. That's why he's not number one. We didn't get it. I just saw his bits and pieces, but I wanted to see like a chunk. And he just, he just whipped, man. But I got to put him on the list, though. I'll be depriving myself when I put him on the list. So, number two is Marty Mar, Martin Lawrence. Honorable mentions, um, I'm going to say Dave Chappelle, I'm going to say some more, I'm going to say D.L. Hughley, I'm going to give Steve Harvey some props, 
I'm going to give um, Guy Torrey some props. I'm going to give Joe Torrey some props. Shucky Ducky, Ronaldo Ray. It's so many fucking people that I couldn't put them on a list because Stars was from that show, man. So respect to Russell Simmons and Bob Sumner for that. Shit, man. It's so many, man. But, hey, only had 11 spots and they didn't fit for me, man. But, hey, I'm going number one right now. Number one has got to be Chicago. I'm not even being biased, man, but I'm going to tell you this. I remember getting a tape for somebody, and they're like, man, you got to see this guy. And like, he's from Chicago, too. Like, what? So I, I put it in, and I watched it, and I thought that she was incredible. And then I told my uncle. The next thing I know, I come in my room, I come home. It's like seven people in my room watching this guy. This guy, the late, great Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac is number one on this list. I knew he was on there a couple of times. I feel like he was kind of shackled a little bit that first time. I thought he was cool. But I'm like, nah, nah, all right. That second time, he go out there, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. Star was born. Star was fucking born, man. I'm glad he was able to get where he needed to get before he passed. Because then he was taken too soon, I think. But that was the genesis of it, man. That's when he became that star, dog. So, hey, man, number one, Bernie Mac. Well, so what you think, people? What do you think, huh? What's your list, huh? Give me your, your top Def Jam performances. And, um, you know, I know y'all going to disagree because that's how y'all do. Most of y'all are haters. Some of y'all ain't never seen the show. You wrong. You wrong. But, hey, write your list down and let's compare them, man. So, hey, next segment. All right, new segment. <laughs> Worst day at work, whatever it is. I'm hitting up all my people that I know and I'm matching them. What was your worst day at your job? So, starting the day off with my man. Good friend of mine, Mr. Mars Timms, first. <laughs> Mars Timms is here. All right, man. Mars Timms is the head of Pimp Prop. Um, he's one of the creators of the thing. If he's not, if he's not one of the creators, he is the creator. They just finished the run 18 years. Mars, 18 years at one spot. How was that? It was pretty good. It was, uh, can't complain. It was a lot of fun. A lot of good memories that we had at CIC. And it was, uh, it was what, um, uh, we did 14, I think, years at CIC, but the show itself has been around for like over 17 years. So, you know, we're still out here. We're still doing it. Yeah, unity, dog. I like it, though. I like it. But hey, out of all those years, CIC, 14 years, you said, right? Yep. 14 years of CIC, every Friday. I was there, like, at least the last 10 years I was there three times a month. No bullshit, y'all. And they used to let me come in for nothing. I opened for him. I did everything. I was a, an honorary pimp. Out of 14 years, what was the craziest night up there? Well, the thing is, the craziest night wasn't even at CIC. Oh, wow. It was during the CIC run, uh -huh. but it was it didn't take place at the theater because uh, in the beginning we would book a lot of shows out. You know, we were still getting our our, our feet wet, if you will, uh -huh. um, getting established, and so people would see the show, and then they would book us to do private events at you know different places, and uh, and and after this event we stopped booking and doing <laughs> private events. And it was like, if you want to book the show, you, you buy the theater out and you bring all your guests to the theater. Cause that way it's a controlled environment. We know the situation. You can't skip out on paying us and any of that stuff. So, so after this event, we stopped doing private events outside of the theater. Um, this lady booked us to do her birthday party. And it was at her house. She booked us to do a birthday party at her house. And and I didn't go. I couldn't be there. Oh, you weren't even there. Okay. I, was, I wasn't even there. Uh, but I had um, uh, three of the guys went and did the show. It was uh, Mark Bratton, who's a Chicago police officer. There was uh, uh, Warren Phoenix, uh, who was just a wild guy all the way around. Yeah. And then there was uh, Skipper Hickson. Uh, yeah. Mr. Straight Lace, just very straight laced and uh, laid back, cool guy. Heidi Ho, man. They go to this house, they, they do the show in this backyard or, or whatever. They said people weren't really paying attention. People just like walking, walking through the show, all this other stuff while they were there. They get done, 
they're uh, they're getting they're getting changed or whatever, and in mm-hmm. waiting to get paid. Right, right. And, and, and so, uh, the they go to the girl and they're like, "All right, well, we're done. We're ready to get paid." And she's like, "I'm not paying." She's like, "I didn't uh, like the show. I didn't like the show, so I'm not paying." Uh, and then her, her boyfriend comes up. Her boyfriend comes up to like intimidate her. boyfriend and the friends, and they're like, "Yeah, we didn't like the show. Y'all not getting paid." Wow. So again, Mark is a cop. Wow. Yeah. And and and, and he doesn't want to, you know, go go Chicago cop on these people. So Mark 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 kept it cool. Mark called me, and okay. Mark's like. And he's like, hey, MT, we did the show. We're here. These people don't want to pay. What's up? You know, I was like, I'll, I'll talk to the lady. So I called the girl. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. The guy said you're not going to pay him. She's like, well, I didn't like the show. I didn't think it was funny. And blah, blah, blah. And I'm, and, and I'm like, and Mark had told me the situation where, you know, people are just, it's a backyard barbecue. Nobody's paying attention. People, people are talking. People are walking through everything they're trying to do. He was like, it was just chaos. So I'm like, this is the deal. You want us there. They showed up. They did the show. You had to pay. She's like, well, I'm not going to pay. So it's it's time to go to court. So, oh, uh, <laughs> I remember. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. So, uh, so I, you know, I, I'm going to take the lady to court. And, yeah. and so I, I'm like, all right. Instead of just regular, you know, Chicago court or whatever, we're going to do one of these court TV shows. <laughs> so uh, there, there was a brand new court TV show called uh, Judge Karen out of New York. I, I submit our case to Judge Karen. Immediately, bam, they're right on it. They're like, oh, you guys are performers. We, we like your show, all this other stuff. We're going to fly you guys out to New York to try this case. <laughs> so... They fly myself and they fly Skipper out. Yeah. So, so we get there, we're, we're backstage and the producer comes in. He's like, and he's like trying to hype it up like all these like court shows and everything. They want you to be like these louder than life people. And like, they want you like talking. They're like, yeah, you guys get all into it. Like be real like loud and sassy with them and all this other stuff. And this is like this little skinny white guy that's telling us to do this. I'm sitting back in the green room. The, the the food tray that they had in there was was trash, like old fruit. The, the meat looked warm, <laughs> and I'm and, and in my head I'm like, look, I'm not going out here to make a fool out of myself. So the trial starts. I go out there. I'm I'm you know I'm representing the group well, being polite, you know, uh, given all the facts. I had all the facts and everything. The contract that I had sent with the lady, and yeah. she's there. And she's that way back. But yeah, but they didn't do this, but they didn't do that. And 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 they weren't even pimps. They didn't even look like pimps. And I was like, hey, we're actors. We're not real pimps. I was like, it's a show. <laughs> and so the judge puts up pictures of us on, on like the monitor. And the judge is like, well, they looks like they look like pimps to me. And she was like, Yeah, but but but. And then she had uh she had a a, a witness with her. And the witness was like, yeah, and they were drinking and they were smoking and they were doing all this other stuff and, and, and they were all drunk and crazy and all this other stuff. And I was like, that's not true because that's, that's not my guys. So right. they're like, do you have a witness? And I was like, yeah, I have a witness. And, and I was like, my witness is Skipper. And the judge goes, Skipper? The show, the show grinds to a halt. It's like a, it's in the studio. It grinds to a halt. Like the lights come up and everything. The director is like cut, and they call like the judge on his phone, and she's like, "Yeah, Skipper," and, 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 and they're like, and so they're trying to figure out if they can use the name Skipper on TV, <laughs> and, and, and and they're like, "All right, yeah, I guess we're going we're going to use Skipper." They think Alan Hale Jr. going to be mad at that shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because I reference if y'all know. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. So um, uh, the lights go back down. It goes back to show lighting. The director's action. And they're like, all right, uh, we call to the stand Skipper. <laughs> Skipper walks out, yellow suit, just, just bright yellow, 
like a yellow shirt, yellow tie, yellow pants, <laughs> yellow socks, yellow shoes, just like this big, bright. Skipper walks in the courtroom, everybody looks, and everybody goes, Because <laughs> Skipper walked in looking like a pimp, and everybody's like, uh oh. Skipper walks up there, you know, he holds his hand up, and he's like, Yeah, I swear to tell the truth, let him the truth. And the judge is like, So, uh, she says that you all were there and you guys were like drinking and smoking and all this other stuff. And Skipper was like, no, that's not true at all. And the judge was like, do you drink? And Skipper was like, no. And the judge was like, you've never had a drink of alcohol. And Skipper was like, no, I've never had a drink of alcohol. I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never, I don't do any of that stuff. And the yeah. girl was just like, and Skipper was like, because Skipper's this super religious dude. So he's like, yeah, I don't do any of that stuff. So, uh, uh, so they, they go through the ruling. The judge is like, hey, you got a contract. You said you're going to pay these dudes. They showed up. They did the show. You were the person that didn't have everything in order and a proper performance spot for them and all this other stuff. Nobody was sitting around paying attention. Bam, you got to pay these people their money. Uh, and we're like, yay, we won. <laughs> they immediately kick us out the studio right onto the street. <laughs> where there's a, a car waiting, the car zooms you to the airport, they throw you on the airplane, they're like, get out of here. <laughs> they gave you a hotel accommodations, right? Yeah, for the night before. After that, you stick you in the airport until your flight. <laughs> I wonder why that show's not still on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Shout out portion of the show to do it a week, man. It ain't kissing no ass. It's just giving guys respect in the game, man. I've been knowing a lot of people, so um, a lot of people in the game. So I'm pretty much just showing everybody love and respect that kind of helped me out in my journey. So today I'm going with my guy from the Carolinas, my boy, Mr. Ron G. Ron G, man, comedian Ron G, man, Carolina cat. Started stand started stand up comedy in Atlanta, man. Moved to LA in like 2004, man. I have to say he's one of the hardest working comedians. I ever seen in my life, man. I admire this cat, man. It's funny because he told me, I did him, <laughs> interviewed him on a podcast, he was a fan of mine first. And I'm like, what the hell you mean? Like, dude, when I first came in the comedy store, when I first came in the comedy store, I saw you doing your st- your thing, man. Like, I want to host a show like that. And you know what? Now he hosts the hottest show in LA, Chocolate Sundays, every Sunday at the Laugh Factory, man, in Hollywood, man. Ain't nothing more to say, but I'm just proud of this cat, man. This dude is like just super genuine, man. God-fearing cat, man. He's about the business. He's more, one of the most disciplined stand-up comedians. Like, he like he practiced his bitch. Like he like he ain't going off the rails like me. I like man, skip this, <laughs> skip this material. I'm going straight at y'all. Whatever I got, this dude like I'm sticking my to my guns, bro. And he told me so. He gave me advice one time, man. I like I don't know. I don't think he even know. He like man, why don't you perform at this spot up here, man? Like dude, man. Like dude, jerk, man. Asshole, I don't like working with dude, man. You know, I don't like him, man. He said, you don't have to like who you work for. You don't have to like who you work for. I'm like, damn. That, that hit me different, bro. If you're watching this, like, that hit me different, man. And it was another time, man, I was there. I was at the open mic. I was going home, and I saw that he was on the show that night. And I'm like, I'm coming back to see Ron G. I haven't seen him in a minute. So I go back. I get there before he does. And I'm sitting in the back of the room. And he came in. Like, oh, man, what's up, man? What's up? He's like, you going up? I'm like, no, man, I came to see you. He's like, oh, okay. And he walked over to the lady that was running the show. And he, like, pointed across the room. And he walked over to me, you going up first, man. I'm like, damn. Like, like really? <laughs> I'm like, dude, I can't even see you. No, man, you can't be just sitting here. You got to put that on stage, bro. So, man, all respect to Cat, man. Me and dude, he came to Chicago a couple of a couple of months ago, man. I went and saw him perform, man. I went and saw him perform. He's still a killer, dog. He's still a killer. This dude, man. Super proud of dude, man. Hardworking dude. Deserves everything he's gotten. This dude's in movies. He's been on TV. He's on this show called Partners in Round with MC Light. My man got an Emmy, man. He got a damn Emmy Award. Proud of you, man. Continue success, my friend. Shout out Ron G, man. For sure. I still don't know what the hell the G mean after knowing you almost 20 years. But, hey, man, respect, bro. Love you, man. That's it. That's the end of the show. Subscribe, man. You know what I'm saying? You watch, you laugh. I want you to share and subscribe. That's all I want you to do, man. We need more people to see this, man. This, this is good stuff, man. Shout out to my brother Lamo behind the boards, the camera, and the sound.
and I'm Ronnie Ray, and we out.